Welcome to the Sawmill Calculator Pro tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to use the features inside of Sawmill Calculator. So this is the main page. And from here, you can get to the, all the basic functions. And you can see that there's a cut list, board feet, and long volume in both US measurements and in metric measurements. And then at the bottom, you see some settings about and a privacy policy. So let's go ahead and look at a few of these features. And let's start out first by looking at the settings, because that will affect a number of the ways that the various screens. So on settings, you can then see there are, are four different sets of settings here that you can change. So the first one is for the cut list, you can choose to either use to measure from the bottom or the right of the blade, depending on whether you're kind of using a band mill where the band goes up and down, or maybe some other kind of mill, maybe a circle saw where um, the band or the, where the actual blade sits up and down, um, or the top or left. And what this means is that when you're cutting, you have some kind of a kerf that's coming out of the, the width of the blade, the amount of um, essentially sawdust that gets created with each cut. And so that is essentially lost material. And you have to account for that. And as you measure, you're saying, what side of the, um, of what side of the blade do I want to actually measure to? And so uh, we can look at that a little bit more when we go to the cut list, uh, but that's the general idea is it's what side of the blade am I measuring from the top or measuring from the bottom in order to get my cut list. Uh, the max board feet quantity, this is simply, so there's some sliders on the board feet screen that show um, quantities, and this allows you to change that. So you can either have very large quantities or very small quantities. It's, it doesn't work very well. Like, let's say uh, if somebody wants to be really granular and down around 25, that's great. But if they have a lot, uh, maybe 100 or 200, um, the slider just behaves a little bit differently depending on how many you have. And finally, to support uh, different types of currency, uh, we have a symbol. You can put in whatever symbol you like here. So if you want to replace this, um, currently looks like it's in euros, uh, but that could be changed if you want to change it to dollars. You can click on this and uh, just go in here and change it to a dollar sign and um, click off and you can see that that, that then changed. And in this case, we'd want it before if we were using US currency, um, currency look like this. So that's the, those are the basics of it. To get back to the screen, you press the back button at the top. And now let's go in and take a look at some of these features. So first of all, the cut list. What this feature does is it gives you a list of all the cuts that you should make in order to cut off the boards that you're looking for. So for example, on a bandsaw, what you'll often do is you'll square up a log and get it into what they typically call a cant. And with that cant, you will then cut down um, each board. So like, let's say, for example, um, your cant is uh, 15 inches tall, and you would then start cutting boards off. And if you wanted to cut off uh, like in the U.S., if you wanted to cut like inch and a half boards, which would be a typical kind of nominal two-inch board, uh, you would go ahead and um, just cut those down. And the problem is that you're measuring from the bottom, and when you deal with the kerf, it's difficult maybe to add those things in. And so like let's say um, we have a kerf of a sixteenth, or we can even do um, an eighth. It doesn't really matter. Um, so an eighth might make the, the numbers a little bit easier for the um, for our for our particular uses here. And then if we said we want um, an inch and a half board, uh, which I guess you oftentimes you cut maybe an inch and five eighths if you want to do some planing or an inch and three quarter if it's a little bit rougher wood. Um, well, we can set that to whatever um, inch and a half will be a little bit easier to understand. Um, I keep on clicking this little plus minus key at the top. Uh, and then the, the approximate total thickness. And this really doesn't matter. This is just it, so you don't get a whole bunch of extra cuts. Uh, it just kind of gives you the general thickness. And then the flitch or remaining uh, or the slab, if you did cut it, so like let's say you only squared three sides and the bottom still has some bark or some wane on it, uh, that is the, the amount that you want to leave left at the bottom when you're all done cutting. And so what this does is it gives you the, the cut list. And so in this case, the, if you look at the very bottom, you see one inch. And so that shows that the first, that last cut is one inch and it's going to leave one inch of that slab that's remaining. And you see here we're measuring from the bottom of the blade. And let's go ahead and go back to the settings and see how it says the bottom or the right of the blade. And so when we go back into here, into the cut list, you can see that the first cut, or the, the last cut, this would be because you're cutting from the top down, that last cut is at one inch and you're measuring from the bottom of the blade and that's going to leave a one inch piece on that's remaining, a full one inch. And so if we set it the other way, that number would just change by an eighth you should be measuring from the top of the blade. So um, let's go, let me go ahead and show you that, what that looks like. So if we go back here and change the settings and do top like that, and we come back in, and you can now see that it's inch and an eighth. 
because you're having to account for the curve of the blade so that you still leave a one inch piece left over as your remaining flitch or slab, the, the part with the wane on it at the bottom. So that's the difference in how this works. Now, uh, the way our bandsaw works, uh, we measure from the bottom of the blade the way it's set up. Now you can you could adjust if you if you found it easier to measure from the top, you can totally do that. That's fine. Um, but this is the way that we typically measure. And so that means that if the first cut is at one inch and I'm leaving a little bit at the bottom, then the next cut is going to be at two and five eighths because we have to account for that blade thickness, the kerf that we take out of the, the cut right there. So uh, and then in each case you can see that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you go up. And this one's not super hard to figure out, um, but there are a lot of cases where this can be tricky, especially if you're trying to do pretty precise cuts and you have a, a very thin blade. Like if you have a 330 seconds kerf, uh, those, those measurements, as you can see here, can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. And really with the cut list, the idea here is simply, I'm gonna just gonna just check these off as I go down and work through my list as I make each cut. So it's really obvious and evident. Here, here's where I am in my cutting, and I can say, oh, like, look, the, the next cut is um, five, and. Um, 25. So uh, that's that screen. Uh, let me show you the metric version of this. The metric version is essentially the same, except you have um, just metric measurements here. And in this case, you can kind of see how the, the proximal total thickness is only 400 millimeters, and my the thickness I'm cutting is 500. So it doesn't really make sense in this case. Uh, so we need to make this number bigger. So let's make this um, significantly more. And we have some huge cuts in thickness here. Let's change these to something more reasonable. Um, let's go down. And you can see there are some um, US measurements kind of built in here and the various, uh, the different popular measurements uh, that are here. So like, let's say we're trying to do this and you can see this is way too big. Um, let's make this a little bit smaller. And you can see there's all over the place. And you can see the first cut here, um, 38. Uh, which again, blade measuring from the bottom and then to 80. And that accounts for all of the different, um, the blade thickness and all that. So uh, that's, the, that's the basics of that screen. All right, let's go on and talk about board feet. So the board feet calculator is essentially so that you can go out and, and if you're looking at a stack of lumber or if someone is looking to purchase some lumber, whatever the case is, uh, you could uh, then easily calculate how much lumber you have. So. A couple of features here, There's, uh, you can see there's a, a hardwood softwood button at the top and essentially what this is going to do is it just changes you from uh, measuring in exact measurements um, to measuring in nominal measurements. And so for hardwood, um, everything is measured in quarters and all the calculations are done off of uh, exact, whatever the exact measurements are. So um, if we had uh, like, let's say uh, in quarters of inches, so if we had some five quarter that we were going to do, uh, that was six inches wide. Whoops. That's six inches wide. And you can go in here and you can actually change these numbers if you want to. Just type in whatever number you want. Um, five quarter and then eight feet long. And there's a quantity of 25. And this is where that quantity slider that we saw on the setting screen, um, you can go ahead and change this. And so if somebody wanted to, like, let's say I had five of those. That's going to tell me, and then if I tell me how many board feet I have down here in the black, where there's some totals, and then whatever the price per board foot or per per thousand board feet is, and so that's the way that, that these are typically done is thousand board feet, and so you would just, um, in this case, it's uh, I guess if you were to, to reduce that, it would be um, uh, two point five four five uh, per board foot. So, and then from here I can take this and. Down here at the bottom, we have this, this lumber list. And so I'm gonna clear out what's here. And I'm just gonna press add, to press that little plus sign right there. And this is going to then add a record down here that I can save. And it'll, it, will, it will save as you, um, if you come in and out of the app or go on and, off, on and off the screen. And I can add a number of different things. If I had some wider stuff I wanted to, to do, I can do that here. And if there's the quantity was maybe a little bit different. There's 10 of those and let's just assume the price is the same. And I can add that. And you can see there that it changes uh, all the totals and gives me a total down here of all this. And so there's a couple of things here that you can do. Once you have this, you can press send email and that will uh, generate an email. And it has two things. It will have uh, a, just kind of a general little summary in there in a little, uh, just, a, just in a little table in the email itself. It will also attach a PDF that contains all this information as well. So it'll, it'll contain all the, uh, the source information about 
what, uh, what lumber you have, essentially everything that's on here, quantity, length, um, all the thicknesses and all that. And then you also have the option of clearing the list. So those are the basics uh, behind the board feed screen. And you can also do that in metric. Again, it's just, it's exactly the same stuff, except everything is measured in millimeters. And you can do the, the same exact features. Uh, the screen looks uh, nearly identical, except with the different kinds of measurements. So now let's take a look at log volume. So log volume is used typically for something like timber cruising, where you're going out and looking at a stand of timber, or maybe you're looking at some logs that are already on the ground and trying to figure out how much, how many actual board feet are in these particular logs. And so uh, this uses several different uh, me methods for calculating this. There's one called Doyle, Scribner International, and Roy. Uh, those are all different ones and they have different characteristics. And I would encourage you to go, they're, they're easily found on the internet. You can see what the, the different variations are. And you can see here that you, there's a huge fluctuation like between, in this case, Doyle and Roy, with the log of, of eight inches, a length of 11 feet, and a quantity of 17, there's a big fluctuation in how much you're going to get in the, the get for those. And each one of these has a different uh, kind of strength when it comes to doing estimation. And whether that's whether you have a lot of taper or a little taper, uh, and then some of the, the actual practices as far as how the log is going to be cut. So um, if we were to modify some of these things, let's say we have something that's a little bit larger, um, maybe something that's like a 16 inch, and let's say 16 feet long. I'm just gonna change that. Uh, there we go. And um, we'll change the quantity around a little bit. Let's say there's um, let's say there's 20 of those. And uh, now we can see what those dimensions are. And at the same, this, the, just the same way the other screens work, uh, we have this ability to add it to a list. And so here we can clear out our list. If we press, come down here, we press clear list. Uh, we'll click, go ahead and clear that off. And if we want to, we can now take and add that one to our list. And now we get the same kind of totals. Uh, and you also get the send email. So here up above, you have the calculations, which are for whatever is above here, and in this case, uh, whatever diameter and length and quantity I have are right here at the top calculations. And then the totals are going to be whatever is in your current log volume list. So if I were to, let's say, add this one again, um, you could see that down here on the bottom, all of my totals double because I've just added the same one. And again, the little red X, we'll go ahead and delete those things. Uh, the send email will do the same thing. It will create a table inside your email with all this information in it. And it will also uh, create a PDF file that we get attached that also has um, everything the same. So uh, we already showed you what curved list does that, that go ahead, goes ahead and clears that list. So these are the basics of how the log volume calculations work, uh, just to give you an idea uh, of what the features are here. So I think that basically covers it. The about screen just has some information about the application uh, and then the privacy policy is required by the app store. So this does not send data anywhere. Um, it just, it's all based right here on the app. Thanks for using Sawmill Calculator. I really appreciate it. I hope it comes in handy for you. Please feel free to reach out if you have a feature request or you're experiencing a problem. Happy and safe sawing.